Welcome to the Forte Web training video series. This video is going to cover the loads tab using a floor joist example. We have some additional videos that go into more detail that you might want to check out regarding loads. Okay, so moving on from the spans and supports tabs, we're going to continue on to the loads tab. Now you're given one load to start with. Now if you're typically adding more than one load, let's say every floor joist that you size has a tile load on it. You can add a load here and call it uniform PSF and let's just say you want it to go across the first, I don't know, five feet or so for some additional dead load and you can say tile. So you can set up uh, whatever default loads you would like, and maybe you don't like 12 for dead, maybe you like 15 as your default dead load. You go ahead and make those changes, and again, you have the save as default button so that you're not having to remember to add the tile load every time or something like that. And you'll see the graphic up top to update with that additional load. Now, in our example, let me pull that back up here, in our example, we had a uh, roof joist here landing on a bearing wall, and that wall is being supported out at the end by our floor joist, FJ4. So let's see here, we have roof joist that has a 16 foot span, a two foot overhang, so half of the load of this roof joist is going onto the wall and then we have all the overhang, so we have roughly 10 foot of roof tributary area that's being supported by this wall and landing down on the floor joist below. Looking at our plan, uh, we're being told that the roof loading is 40 PSF live load and 15 PSF dead load. So what we're going to do is convert that to a PLF load, pounds per lineal foot load, and we're going to drop that as a point load down on the ends of our FJ4s to get a correct size. Now we have some training on how to do this calculation and determine tributary widths and converting uniform PSF loads to PLF loads and things of that nature on our Warehouser Learning website. We'll include a link to that here, or you can just Google Warehouser Learning and uh, you can sign up for an account and learn more about that if you're not familiar with it already. Okay, so what we're going to do is take our load number two, we're going to convert that to a point PLF load to account for the roof load coming down that, that wall. Now point PLF, uh, you'll see we have, before we talked about the tile, we did uniform PSF and our floor load is uniform PSF, it's applying across the whole joist. Point PLF allows us to look at different joist spacings and it's going to adjust the amount of load coming down from the roof accordingly. If we had done the math to figure out point pounds, how much load from the roof in pounds is landing on each joist, if we looked at a 12 inch on center floor system versus a 16 inch on center floor system, we'd have to go back and do the math to convert our point load from the roof, right? Because if the floor joists are closer together, they're supporting less load from the roof. As we spread them out, they're supporting more load. So point PLF allows us to look at those different solutions without having to re-input the load with the proper magnitude. Now this wall is landing on the end of our joist. We're going to say right down the middle of that two by four wall, one and three quarter inches in. And we'll see that little arrow is an indication of a point load. Now we're going to put in uh, the dead load of our wall itself, we'll say 80 PLF, and you can make a note here in the comments section. So we'll say 8 foot wall load, and the more information you can provide here, the better. So and now I'm going to go ahead and copy this load. and I'm just going to edit the magnitudes. So I'm going to start off with my note, 10 foot roof load, tributary 
and we can say 40 PSF snow, 15 PSF dead. And then OK. And then our math is fairly easy. So, oh, hang on, let me. Got my little footmark. So you just click on it again if you need to make any edits. So 10 times, uh, it was 15 PSF dead, so 150. And then 40 for my snow times 10 is going to be 400 PLF for the snow load. Now I've accounted for my loads correctly. And you see my little point load indicated here, and the notes, uh, the comments will all print out on my member report. Uh, you do have the ability to link reactions as you build up your, uh, your job tree. You can link the reactions from, from one member to another, and we'll get into that more when we size a beam. And you have the ability to add quick loads. So you may have seen how we added a snow load earlier. You can add that without, it just saves you some typing. All right, so we have correctly modeled all our loads for our FJ4 joist, and we can continue on to the other tabs.